Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emanuel, I am an airline pilot and in today's video we are going to review what is probably the best single engine aircraft available for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Now, excuse me for that spoiler alert, but in this video we're going to find out why I think that this is the best. And the aircraft we are seeing is not a Cessna Caravan, as I'm sure many of you will think. It is actually a Quest Kodiak or a Daher Kodiak 100. Now, it was designed by a Quest, but has been purchased by Daher by now. So that's the reason for the change of the aircraft's name. Alright, so... Many of you will notice that this aircraft looks pretty similar to the Cessna Caravan and you are right with that, because it is actually designed for pretty much the same role. So, small little aircraft, but it does have quite a bit of power under its hood. It can fly an airspeed of approximately 100 knots true, while not having a pressure cabin, so 10,000 feet, flight level 100 is the limit under European legislation, unless you're carrying additional oxygen. The aircraft itself is, however, able to climb quite a bit higher. So, we'll start with a walk around, and when we get inside, I'm going to show you some amazing features that make this airplane so special. First of all, on the walk around, though, it's a high detailed model everywhere around. Nose gear looks simple, but Actually, there is everything modeled over here. And even the small placards here, very well readable. So good job on those. Moving out, very very nice tex texture on the spinner over here. I really like that one. Just like the details here, everywhere, everything is crisp. Going along the wing, we have our weather radar pot over here. So this is where the weather radar is housed. Stall warning. That's the one up here. The air pushes below it when the angle of attack increases, eventually pushing the plate to the top, and then it closes an electrical circuit, which in turn then gives you the stall warning. Our probes are lights. Everything's modeled in 3D, as you would expect from an MSFS model. So you can see flaps quite a bit of detail in here that I have to say I really like going around very nice details also on the bolts and everything in the fuselage here so overall really well detailed exterior model of the airplane and a very good looking one as well I have to say so if you like the looks of a Cessna Caravan then you're going to love the looks of the uh, Kodiak. It comes with several different interiors. Right now we have the Summit interior, so this is more of an executive transport version here. We also have a skydive interior and a cargo interior, and we have a mixed interior available in the aircraft. Also some nice details here like the chocks lying in front of the plane. And let's head up into the flight deck, where you are going to see that the details actually continue all the way. So, before we start setting up our aircraft for our flight, let's have a quick look into the back. Right. So, this is our aircraft's cabin. When we get back here, let's close our doors. Actually, got to close them in several steps. So first, you pull the lower part up, then you get the upper part down, and then you've got to close both of them, like this. Alright, and the same we're going to do at the front. Close the front door, and then lock the door. That actually has to be done in two different steps. Alright, so... We're in the aircraft, let's quickly load it up and uh, see what we want to take. We're going to take full fuel, because why not? And we have, of course, a pilot. And we'll also take a co-pilot along. Here she is. 
That's something I really like about this aircraft. You add the weight in the payload station and then the uh, person is displayed. That looks especially cool on the freighter version, where the cargo is slowly filling up as you increase that slider. Alright, so, interior model, just as beautiful as the outside model. And what's really cool about this airplane is that uh, those circuit breakers down here, they actually work. So, you can see it over here, we can pull them all. That all has the irrespective effect that it's supposed to have. So that's really, really nice. Okay, so, let's actually get our airplane powered up here. So, for the ATC today, I am going to use the brand new FS HUD. So, for once I will not fly on VATSIM, but I'm going to use FS HUD for the ATC. Now, if you don't know what that is, that is an air traffic control add-on that has just recently been released for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And make your own impression on this video whether you like it or not. So. Avionics are on. Let's actually see what our frequency is supposed to be. Yep, here we go. Right, so let's request our startup clearance in order not to drain the battery. Alright, so let's get our startup clearance as well then. Alright, so startup is approved then. Actually, we can leave the avionics on in this aircraft. Fuel pump, ignition. We'll put the prop into the feathered position. So thrust is idle, prop feathered. The fuel shutoff is on and the fuel levers are both on as well. So, let's go ahead then. Starting engine. Alright, that looks like we have a good start. So then, let's actually go ahead and program our flight plan. We're going from Kiel Holt now... Uh, sorry, we're going to Kiel Holt now from Lübeck. The Lübeck scenery is the um, scenery that's included in the world update for Germany. So, let's go. Flight plan. The GTN in here is the working title uh, G1000, so that's a very, very good um, 
tool. I really liked it, I always did. And it's probably one of the best avionics that we have available in flight simulation at the moment. So we're going from Echo, Delta, Hotel, Lima. Lübeck, Blankensee. Runway is gonna be 07 according to our clearance. Procedure, select departure. And this is the Lugem 1 Alpha departure. Over here. To Lugek, load. Oops, that's the wrong button. Here we go. And that's leading us from Lugag towards Kilo India Lima NDB. Along the airway Quebec 800, but since it's just a single waypoint, I'll just put Kilo India Lima in straight away. And we have the NDB in Germany. Our destination is Echo Delta Hotel Kilo. Kielholtener, of which there is a really nice freeway scenery available on uh, flightsim.to. I can really recommend you to check that out. I'm going to link it in the video description below as well. Right, and procedures. Select. Approach. It's going to be the ILS runway 08 via Kilo India Lima. The minimum we'll insert later on. So, load the approach. Yes, please. Okay, so that's basically our flight plan completed in here. So, we have 4,100 feet. We have the transponder. All we can do now is just quickly set our PFD options. Okay. So, we are pretty much ready to go. Raymond Brown, Delta Foxtrot Echo Romeo Delta, request taxi. Delta Foxtrot Echo Romeo Delta, taxi to holding point, runway 07, line alpha. Taxi to holding point, runway 07, via alpha, Delta Foxtrot Echo Romeo Delta. Okay, taxi light on, park and brake off. The airplane just needs some very little thrust to actually get moving. And here we go. The Kodiak is very nice to taxi. It feels very gentle, and if you're gentle on the thrust, then it's very hard to actually over control it. So, Romy 07 is right up here. Break set, let's do a run up real quick here. By the way, in case you are wondering about um, procedures and checklists, you have the full procedures included in here. So, if you go into the checklist, it's all in the simulator. So if you have a look here at the before takeoff checklist, then it's all there. Park and brake set, seatbelts locked secure, inertial, re inertial rear levers, those are up here. They're going to lock now. Flight controls. Free and correct. Fuel selectors on on both sides. Fuel shutter valve open. Fuel quantity down here is checked. Flaps set for takeoff in the first position. Trim set for takeoff. Engine inlet system check on first flap of the day. Power lever 300 foot pound. So let's just 
just a bit more than what we have at the moment. Here we go. Fast voltage is uh, 24 volts minimum. We see that on the electrical panel here. We have 26. So, down here it is. And we have the Obis Governor Overspeed Warning Test complete. Power lever idle. Water and friction lock adjust as necessary. Inertial separators required. Peter static heaters. On when OAT is less than 10, we're going to turn them on all the time. Avionic set, CDI set, annunciators checked, strobe lights as required, and park rate release. Alright, so. Let's actually taxi up to the runway. Small point here, some of you will say, but you're crossing the um, runway marking. Yeah, that's true. Um, FS Hot currently needs you to get really up close to the runway to recognize it and give you the tower handoff. So, that's why. So, line up. Systems are all checked. Let's go. By the way, the shaking effects and everything you see here, that's from FS Realistic. If you haven't tried FS Realistic yet, there is a free 7-day trial in which the program works. Delta, Foxtrot, Echo, Romeo, Delta, Wind, Calm, Runway, 07. Please take off. Runway, 07. So if you haven't tried FS Realistic yet, there's a free trial that works um, unlimited for seven days. Alright, so we'll start the timer. And then here we go. You'll notice on takeoff that it needs quite a lot of, uh, quite little elevator and is quite sensitive on the elevator axis, but if you are careful on the controls, then it can perfectly do this. Okay, that's 60 knots. Rotate. Flaps up. Set, eights are tracked. Alright, so I've put the autopilot on. Let's see how the autopilot is flying the plane first, and then when we get to our destination airport, we will complete the ILS, do a go around, and then do a little bit of hand flying to show you how the airplane flies manually. Overall, the autopilot is doing a really good job here. What you have to do, however, is to apply quite a bit of rudder trim in this aircraft. So...
when you're using high thrust settings here always have a look at the symbol on your primary flight display over here and that should be centered beneath the uh, bank pointer so you will notice that there is quite a bit of trim needed in order to get that done that's because we have such a powerful engine on this aircraft right let's also accelerate slightly to our end route climb speed that's going that'll be a hundred knots The autopilot is not able to control the rudder, that's why you see it not doing a coordinated turn. That's entirely normal and up to the real aircraft. Even though we do have a yaw damper available, so let's put that on. But it's a basic yaw damper in this aircraft, so no turn coordination is provided. Right, that's a departure field down there. So, from here on, um, maybe a couple words on the overall flight dynamics of the airplane. I feel that it is pretty, let's put it, easy to over control this airplane, but then again, that is totally normal indeed. So, if your aircraft is um, running away from you, or seems to be running away from you, then just do some smaller inputs and you will eventually get there and get to the point where this aircraft flies really, really nicely. But you'll have to apply less input than what you would probably expect from some other aircraft types. And of course, whenever you change power, you'll have to retrim the airplane. That's something you'll have to keep in mind. No, we don't want to overspeed our N1 down there. Let's remove a bit of power. The, uh, the engine simulation of this aircraft has just recently received an update, and it is working really really good I have to say this is a really good turboprop simulation so if you just slam the thrust lever onto the table on your takeoff then you are almost guaranteed that you are going to damage the engine so if you see any red numbers illuminating on here on your engine panel then be sure to correct that quickly otherwise you are risking to damage your aircraft and that's all fully simulated so you can expect to get into some trouble there if you don't do things correctly however doing them correctly isn't that difficult either basically for takeoff advance your thrust slowly the takeoff speed of 60 knots is reached really really quickly so it is a good idea if you are unfamiliar with the aircraft to apply a little bit of a brakes and hold the brakes until your thrust is set, then let go for brakes and then start your takeoff roll. Also, this is a STOL certified aircraft. STOL means short takeoff and landing. So, what that means is that basically the airplane needs only very little takeoff runway as well as very little landing runway. It can go into some very short fields like, for example, Courchevel or Helgoland. If you want. So, this is a perfect aircraft to explore some of the areas that you cannot get into with your bigger aircraft. While at the same time you get an aircraft that is not particularly slow, as said, we can go up to around about 180 knots uh, true airspeed cruise. Which I'm going to show you in a moment, by the way. Let's just reach our cruise level of flight level 80.
And here we are. As your speed increases, you will need to apply some rudder trim once again. But let's quickly accelerate your cruising speed, and then we're, once we've reached that, we're going to trim our airplane out. Right, we can already start reducing our propeller RPMs here. As you reduce the prop RPMs, be sure to have an eye on your torque, as you want to be careful not to over torque the airplane while the prop RPMs are changed. So we'll go 2000 RPMs here. And that should give us a nice speed. So, time to trim the airplane out. You can. Okay, so. Expect the Kilo India Lima ILS approach from May 08. That is what we have been expecting anyway. We have our top of descent over here. That's all we need. 25 miles to go. So that provides a little bit of time to show you a little bit more of the airplane. So, for now, time to trim it out. Again, you will be doing quite a bit of trimming in this airplane, but that is actually fairly normal. And um, as you can see now, we're level in flight, level 80, and we're getting a true airspeed of about 180 knots out of the airplane. A little bit of headwind, unfortunately, but that's not too much of an issue. It's a short, fairly short flight, so we want to have some time talking about a little bit of the airplane anyway. So, first thing that comes to my mind there when we are actually going towards our destination. Let's have a look outside. I know you guys love seeing external views. So here we are. So, the main points of operation where we would fly an aircraft like this. First of all, of course we have our VIP transport as we're doing it right now. Then, cargo transport to remote locations is also something that an aircraft like this is very much used for. So, whether it is flying medical equipment to Courchevel or bringing the current newspapers to places like Helgoland provided that there is no shipping going. That's the kind of operation you would do in this airplane. Of course, it's also a great little airplane for island hopping, so if you do like that, I can very much recommend you to go with this plane. The fact that it uses the Jeep also makes it very easy to navigate it, and it, of course, benefits from all the lovely features of the G1000. So, for example, if we are looking for our destination weather, Let's see if it can find something. Here we are. Wind 0904, slightly variable, 10 kilometers, scattered 900, broken 3900, 13 degrees, 1011. We also have our VNAV information down here. The airplane itself also does have a VNAV mode, so we're going to try that out momentarily. Overall, the G1000 is a really nice aircraft here, so I really appreciate um, having the G1000 available. Again, that's the uh, working title G1000, so you are probably familiar with it from some other aircraft in Microsoft Flight Simulator, such as the Cessna Caravan. Right, so, in the meantime, let's have a quick look into the systems we have available in this aircraft. So, on the left side here, of course, we have our master switch. We have the avionics bus, auxiliary bus, standby fuel pump, which I should have turned off, by the way. 
just like the ignition system. And we have our starter in here, it's got a high mode and a low mode. From Normally, you would put the ignition on and use low mode to start it. If you use the high mode, technically speaking, you won't need the ignition, even though it's good practice to put it on anyway. And, of course, generator and alternator, pretty much what you're used to from an aircraft like this. Park and brake is hidden beneath the control column over here, so that is um, good to have this feature to be able to hide the control column out of view. Going on, we have a couple of lights over here, including cabin lighting, instrument panel lighting. This aircraft is, of course, certified for a nighttime flying. Then down here we have our ice protection system, so we've got the engine inlet system, P2 heaters, then we have the uh, surface, a prop anti-ice, which however only got an on and off position here, not the three normal, uh, not the three different modes that we would have available on the real plane. Same for windshield heat, backup pump and an ice light, which basically shines light on the leading edge of the wing, making it easier to recognize ice on the leading edges for the pilot at night. Going on, we have our autopilot, which is pretty much a standard autopilot, but I am not 100% sure if it is custom program, but in any case it flies very, very well, so I am led to believe that this is a custom autopilot that we have in the airplane. Also, our terrain, terrain awareness system inhibits switch in here. Always good to have, because in we flight simmers are used to getting incorrect uh, GPWS messages, for example, if an airport is not in the database. So that's why it's always good to have this system available. Going down here, basically we have our ELT. We have an oxygen system here, which however is providing oxygen through uh, masks. So you'll have to bring a mask which you're able to plug into the aircraft over here and then oxygen can be flowing there. This does enable you to fly a little bit higher than the um, 10,000 feet restriction that I talked about earlier on. Uh, firewall shutoff lever. If your, your engine isn't starting, you think you've done everything correctly, check that this is in the down position. In the up position, it's obviously not going to work because fuel is not being... Um, transited through the firewall that's separating the engine from the passenger compartment. Up here we have our air conditioning system. I'm sure you're familiar with this one from some other uh, flight simulator aircraft. Moving down here we have our um, control stand. You have an emergency power lever over here which is pretty much the only difference from the standard equipment that we are used to from an aircraft like this. Moving down, we get to our circuit breakers, and those are actually modeled. So, let's see, I don't want to shut down the engines, but um, there is a small trick there. If you pull the circuit breaker for the standby instrument, so for this one up here, you're getting quite a bit more frames per second, which is a nice little trick if you should have bad FPS. However, I have to say on my system, this airplane is performing exceptionally well, so I didn't have any frame rate problems with this one. Alright, and finally we have a first officer who doesn't know how to put her feet on the paddles. But anyway. Okay, so our top of descent is in two minutes time already. So ATC said they wanted to let us know when we are ready to descend. Let's quickly confirm our arrival with them. Alright, so, that is that. Then let's quickly go over our approach as well. It is going to be the ILS approach for Romme 08. Frequencies. Are 110.5. 
We'll put that active on both sides. Then we have the NDB on 353. And actually, I don't think this aircraft even has an ADF. Uh, yes, it does. Sorry, my mistake. So, zero, three, five, three. We'll put that active. So we have the local outer frequency 109.5 that's going onto both sides now. In a kilo hotel whiskey is the island that's confirmed already. And here we're getting our VNAV information, so let's report ready for descent. Delta Fox, Romeo, Romeo, Delta, ready for descent. Delta Fox, Romeo, Romeo, Delta, descend and maintain maintain So Vina Path is captured. I'm just going to reduce the um, engine power slightly to keep our speed up high. Meantime, last thing we got to do is set our speed box for the approach. Now, oh, I don't want to touch you. It's going to be bare minimums, and uh, we're going to set that 345 feet. So this one is going into 10 foot increments, so that's going to be 350 feet then for our minimums. Alright, that is pretty much the approach setup complete. The course is going to set itself automatically by the time that we are intercepting our final approach course. You can see a little bit of weather in here, but um, that's nothing we should be afraid of with this aircraft. Perfectly capable of uh, flying through this weather. Quick approach briefing then. We are flying the ILS approach from 08 at Kiel in Germany, chart 11 1 from the 27th of May 2022. Frequency is 109.5, active on both sides. Final approach course is 082. That will be automatically selected. Minimum 350 feet, that is set down here as well. We'll leave the Kiel NDB on the QDR 277 until 7.1 dB from Kilo Hotel Delta. And then we'll make a left hand turn and join the final approach. The DME is associated with our ILS, so we should basically have it available straight away. Alright, and that is pretty much all that we have to take care of for this approach. We're going to vacate the runway at the end, to the left, and then we'll probably get taxi clearance to the... Um, or we'll probably get taxi clearance to the main apron. Now, in real life, Kiel is an information only, so once you are on the final approach, you will be sent over to Kiel information. I don't know if our ATC add-on can do that, but we'll find out in a few moments. Again, for the descent using VNAV, it's fairly easy. The speed is holding pretty steady if you, uh, pretty steady if you just reduce your thrust a little bit. So that makes things really easy to fly. And overall, flying the Kodiak on autopilot is really straightforward. Not a lot to take care of with this, and um, it's actually doing exactly what it's supposed to do. And I'm not saying that too often in flight simulation, you know that by now. Right, so... Altimeter 1011, that's what the ATC said. Passing 4-2, descending 2-3. 
No flags. Stamp all to meet her is sad as well. Flying through the small shallow over here. We see it on our weather radar as well. Alright, so our plan is to disconnect the autopilot at the minimums on the ILS and then we are going to fly a little bit by hand. We'll leave the traffic pattern towards the north over the uh, North Sea where we are going to do a little bit of air work. Actually no, we are not going to fly over the North Sea but we'll actually take it over the flatlands just outside Kiel because the North Sea over here is all military restricted area because there are some uh, Navy training locations nearby. So, we'll take it over the land, do a little bit of air work, maybe some stalls and uh, steep turns, and then we're going to return to land the airplane visually on uh, Kiel Airport. So, altitude capture will start reducing our airspeed here. And that's the approach mode armed. Localizer capture. Glass of capture. So, missed approach altitude, 2,000 feet set. Delta Foxtrot Echo Romeo Delta established on localizer. Delta Foxtrot Echo Romeo Delta contact tower 119 decimal 97. Contact tower 119 decimal 97 Delta Foxtrot Echo Romeo Delta. Uh. Why is it reverting Delta, out of the approach Delta, mode? Alright, autopilot off. Now we have Glasslop capture again. Not sure why this happened. Let's put the autopilot back on. Let's see how good it is at re-intercepting. So, flaps 10. That was a perfect re-intercept, I have to say. I don't know why it lost the glide slope in first place, but now it's perfectly established again. That actually looked very good, so that didn't look like it was just coincidence, but this actually looked like there is some proper code behind it. So, flaps 20. And flaps 35. Now be aware that this is a 2 degrees offset approach, that's published in the chart as well, so if you see the runway looking a little off over there, then that's totally expected.
Okay, let's not get too slow here. Basically, whenever you are adding thrust, you also have to add some rudder. You can see it right now how the airplane easily wanted to deviate to the left just because we added some thrust. Right, propeller full forward. Uh, disconnecting autopilot. We'll go around here. Oh, that was a little too close. Five hundred. Go around. So you can see I'm setting the thrust pretty slowly here. Flaps 20, and that should give us our climb performance. And flaps 10. Yeah, thanks, but we don't need that clearance anymore, so we are going to... Lock off ATC and off we go. So, flaps up, flat rectors off, your damper off. And if you're reducing your thrust, uh, sorry, your propeller setting, be sure to do it very slowly in order not to overtalk the engine. Okay, here we are, 2,000 RPMs. That's what I was looking for. A small issue here with the working title um, G1000. There are occasions where you can just not turn off the flight director. So, I've turned it off down here. For some reason it still st stays visible. So we'll have to ignore that for now. Right, let's head over to a place where the clouds aren't as low as they are over here. So that we can do a little bit of air work. So by now it's all manual flying that we'll do. Show you how the airplane behaves. And show you, or rather prove you, that I didn't talk uh, nonsense earlier on. When I told you that this airplane can be flown very nicely by hand. Even though you have to be a little careful that you are not over controlling it. So it's very small control inputs only that are required. Just have a look at what I'm doing on the yoke down here. and what kind of effect it has. So I'm following my um, G1000 here in order to get us out of the rain showers. Probably straight out, there should be a little bit better, better weather. At the same time, I try to keep the airplane somewhere away from the city, just so that we don't cause too much noise, but We'll just go right over it anyway. Weather is unfortunately not quite as good over here as it used to be in Lübeck, but we'll have to live with that for now. It seems to be quite a bit better over there. As I said, I really like the looks of the model. It just looks authentic. Not overdone, but most definitely not underdone as well. If you know what I mean with that. So, last little shower, then we've hopefully passed the weather.
Oh, this looks quite a bit better over here. Well, let's actually go up to some altitude. At least a little bit. Maybe we'll just put 3,000 in the autopilot here. I don't think we're going to get much higher. Actually, we are going to get a little bit higher. Let's put 4,000 in the autopilot then. That gives us a little bit of margin so that we can do some stalls. Alright, so let's go ahead and test the flight dynamics in the more extremes then. We'll start with a steep turn, 45 degrees left for 180 degrees and then 45 degrees right for 180 degrees. And all of that while trying to maintain 4,000 feet. So, here we are. I'll pull off a little bit thrust in order not to get too fast to keep the G-loading under control. So, let's start with a 45 degree Bank angle left turn. The turbulence of the weather is of course not really helping it right now. But nonetheless you can see even with the turbulence the airplane is really nice to maintain and control. Let's roll over to the other side then. So, just for the fun of it, let's do the same at 60 degrees angle of bank. So, here we are, 60 degrees. Quite a rapid turn, but still the altitude is well controllable. And the same into the other direction. After all, this aircraft gives us really good control. Feels really easy to fly, feels really fun to fly. As said, you have to do rather small control inputs to keep the plane under control, but that's totally normal. And that's something that is actually not very hard to get used to. Okay, so let's try to keep away from the clouds. And let's do our first stall now. This is going to power off, flaps up stall. So, power into idle. Stop. Stop. There we go. Be very careful when you're adding thrust back in, because it does induce quite a rolling moment. Right now, let's lower the flaps. Flaps 10, 20, and make sure to get the speed below 108. Flaps full. Now let's do the same again. Power off. Stop, stop, stop. Alright, retracting the flaps to 10 straight away. Otherwise, they really have too much drag. And here we go. 
So you see it's a very nice and gentle airplane to fly. The last exercise we're going to do is an approach in the stall. Uh, sorry, a stall in an approach configuration. So we'll get our flaps out again. We'll assume about 500 feet a minute descent and then we'll slowly let the airplane go down and lose its speed in order to simulate a stall on final approach. So, quickly trimming the airplane out. So, here we are, about 500 feet a minute. Stabilize. Let's pull off the thrust. Stop, 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 and stop, I'll just stop, get it fully into stop, it. Stop. There we go. Okay. I'm very sure that somewhere in this airplane there is a sticker saying intentional spinning is prohibited. So let's not do that again. Anyway, that shall conclude our flight testing. Overall, it handles very nicely. It flies believable and you have to keep your rudder trim under control. But that is actually the case in any aircraft, even in the Boeing 737. We are constantly re-trimming that rudder. Now in the 737 it's for different reasons than in the Kodiak. But nonetheless, it just gives you a taste of um, what flying such an airplane is about. If you're flying the Phoenix A320 then you'll probably see as well that the Phoenix is actually doing the very same thing. That the Phoenix is constantly adding a little bit of rudder trim left and right. Just have an eye on it. Alright, so what we're going to do for the landing is I'll demonstrate you the short field landing characteristics of the airplane. So, we'll get the approach speed right down to the minimum, which is just above 60 knots, so about 65 knots, in flaps full. And as soon as we're down, I'm going to apply maximum braking to show you in what little of a distance the airplane can actually land. Didn't I say earlier on that we did not want to fly over the city? Well, the approach is just too beautiful not to do it. The approach over the water. And since we don't have any people here complaining about noise, I think we can make an exception over here. Right, let's accelerate a little. So, while we are on our way back to Kiel, Let's summarize what we've seen in this review. The Kodiak got a beautiful looking exterior as well as interior model, that's without any doubt. And its flight characteristics are believable. I have never flown an actual Kodiak, so I can't tell you if it's 100% accurate, but it certainly feels correct. And that's the important part for me over here. So. The autopilot is doing an excellent job. I, again, I don't know why it lost the glide slope capture here, but um, it re-intercepted really nicely, so we'll give them the points for the autopilot. And overall, the system simulation is really, really in-depth. So, the circuit breakers work, the systems work, it just works. That's how I can summarize this aircraft best. It just works. And that's why I personally think 
that this is the best single engine aircraft we have at the moment for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The best doesn't mean that there are no other good aircraft. So, thinking for example of the Just Flight Piper 28, that is an excellent aircraft as well. But, this one just is a little bit more complex, and it's simulated a little bit more complex. So, that's why I have to say that I really like this plane a little bit better than the others. Alright, so, the wind is actually coming from straight ahead, and as we descend it's going to turn left a little bit, so that means that we'll actually land into the uh, 26 direction here, rather than the uh, Romwe 08 that we've been approaching. The wind suck over there confirms it as well, the wind favors Romwe 26 by now, so let's go to Romwe 26. Flaps 10. Fuel pump on. Flaps 20. And flaps 35. Seventy knots is a good approach speed. We've seen earlier on that the stall speed is at 60, so we do have a little bit of margin left over here. And we've come to a stop. Now, have a look outside. We touch down pretty much here on the marker. And that's how easy it is to get this airplane to a standstill. So, amazing short field performance here. If you want to bring this into a short Rome, you most definitely can. It requires a little bit of uh, practice to actually keep the speed steady on the final approach, but you can get there after a couple of traffic patterns. So, overall, yes, it does need a little bit of practice to um, get to know this aircraft, but personally, I've been able to get accustomed to it really quickly, and it really didn't take me very long to uh, get to fly it. Now, some of you who have seen the video are most certainly going to say, yeah, we saw by your flying skills that you um, have not practiced too much. And, well, just don't tell anyone, okay? No, uh, just joking. After all, it's a really nice airplane to fly, and it's really gentle. You just have to get used to doing just a small control inputs rather than doing strong inputs and then there is uh, really not a lot to complain about. It flies very nicely, it's easy to control it precisely. You have to keep an eye on the speed on final though, so um, don't do what I just did and approach at 70 and then lose that 10 knots. I went to 63 and when I added thrust in order to keep uh, to gain my airspeed back, I really needed to add some rudder in order to keep the airplane under control. Now that is absolutely correct for an airplane like this, but nonetheless, it's something to be aware of as a pilot when you're flying it.
So, the big question. Would I recommend the Kodiak? Well, the fact that I called it my favorite single-engine aircraft is probably taking that away. I would absolutely recommend the Kodiak. It flies very, very nicely. It's a real joy. It provides for some different missions than what all of us are used to from our Airbuses and our 737s. And it is really well simulated aircraft as well. The model is looking really good. The systems are simulated to a very high depth. And overall, these two combined with good flight dynamics in an aircraft like this is really all that we can ask for as flight simmers, isn't it? So let's go ahead, shut the airplane down. And here we are. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a comment, leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel. And if you really, really love what I'm doing, I would be very happy for a small donation through the Buy Me A Coffee link in the video description below. Enjoy your weekend. I hope you have a little bit better weather wherever you are than I'm having here at the moment. And I'm looking forward to see you all again on the next one. Until then, thank you very much. Have a good one. And see you all again soon.